beginning, and if you're on Facebook, you'll see uh, him stepping into our picture. We're beginning with our host, the uh, gentleman who first informed uh, myself and Miriam L. Wallach about why this would be such a great match to have us tell the world about this amazing cause and this effort that's happening up here in Toronto. That's Yummy Schachter, who's been a great friend for many, many years. And last night told us that if you would have spoken to him a month ago, he would not have known about this morning's and today's campaign. Yummy Schachter, thank you for hosting us, and welcome back to JM in the AM. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's nice. To clarify, I'm not hosting you. This is someone else's house. Right. This is someone and else's home. They are home. very graciously They are the hosting. official host. But I would never host you this early in the morning <laughs> in my house. <laughs> but we've, we've given you the responsibilities of host, of welcoming us here and really kicking off this entire effort for our audience. So if I would have spoken to you a month ago, this uh, campaign would not have been on the map. No. In fact, a month ago, I had zero involvement in Toronto Hatsala or Toronto Erev uh, until David Stein came along, and uh, you'll meet him shortly. Right. Um, very good man who's involved in a lot of amazing things throughout the city, and he uh, bullied me into uh, helping out, and here we are today. And I guess the message Thank was, you, I guess the message was if these two important community organizations are going to continue, they need funding. Yes. So the idea basically was when I was actually surprised when David, who is synonymous with Chesed, but specifically with Hatzalah in the city, when he said that Hatzalah doesn't have any money in the bank, I was shocked because a service that a community like Toronto uses so frequently should never need money, should never have to do an emergency campaign to raise money. Uh, and through somewhere in the first discussion or the second discussion that we had about the subject, uh, the Erev came up as being similar in that it's a service that is volunteer run, but everyone in the city uses, but nobody pays for. I think people assume that volunteer organizations don't need money. Right. And you and I both know that it's not exactly <laughs> not the way the it works. Um, and, uh, and we decided to put them together because it really tells a story of two organizations that everyone takes advantage of and uses it uses, but that nobody thinks to really support. So the idea through this campaign of putting them both together is number one, to raise enough money for both organizations to make it through an entire year without having to sweat and to allow them during that year to really focus on reaching out to the community and building enough awareness so that by the time we get here next year, and by the time the funds raised today, uh, are are used up or are starting to be depleted, that the community knows on its own that these are organizations that are important to be uh, supporting. It's a very interesting match. One organization is one you always want to be there. The other one is one you pray you never see exactly. in, in your home. Exactly. So it's a very interesting balance between the two. The Erev, uh, as you explained to uh, us last night, and I think it's really obvious to anybody who's involved in an Erev in their community, uh, even if everyone, in theory, would be a volunteer, the expenses just to maintain an Erev, just to make sure it's checked, just to make sure it has all the regulations that are being followed that the government, the local government, insists upon, just that is a major expense. Yeah, so I'll let Danny Gordon, who's the president of the Erev, deal with that. Great. He'll be on shortly. Um, he probably won't say this, so I'll say it now, but he also, we're, I think Danny was involved also in bringing Hatzalah to Toronto. Uh, he'll probably kill me for saying that, but uh, this is all his fault, I guess. <laughs> the whole thing. Understood. Yeah. And, and of course, the Hatzalah organization, uh, there it's probably a little easier for people to understand. Obviously, we'll talk with, with some of the guests later on, but it's a little easier for people to understand that there are expenses. There are ambulances and there's equipment. There's there training. are no ambulances here. Oh, but okay. there's training volunteers. I'll let David or right. someone else talk about that too. See, I don't know exactly. I, I don't right, want to start getting to into the financial perspective. But, but basically, you have to train volunteers. You have to have insurance for volunteers. You have to right. pay people who work on Shabbos. Right? I never even thought of that. Right. You have a Shabbos guy. They're not Needs working for paid. free. They need to be paid. Right. Um, you know, there's equipment, there's training, there's and there's expansion, right? Both for the Air and for Hatzala. Right. The the other idea through this campaign is to allow Hatzala to recruit more volunteers and to train more volunteers and get more people responding. Obviously bringing down the response time to any emergency throughout the city. Currently it's at 3 minutes or under. So to get it in two minutes or under would be even better. Right. Uh, so to train more volunteers and to expand more areas in which they service. And the same goes for the Arif, to go further north, to go further south, to in- incorporate the hospitals. And, you know, the, the Toronto community keeps uh, growing 
further and further north, and the area should cover everything. So, again, like you said, city permits and right. uh, having people to check it and put things up and fix things when they're down. Yummy Schachter welcoming us here to Toronto. Um, the charity model, which I think the Jewish community is really getting used to at this point, because we've been, you know, we've been uh, uh, involved in many different campaigns. Uh, I would hope that that model will encourage people to give. Is there an indication? Is there any way for you? as coordinator, or one of the coordinators of all this, to get a feel over the last few days if, in fact, this charity campaign is motivating people to get involved and to give money? So it's a very good question. I think Danny would probably uh, answer this better as well. Uh, we're starting to get used to the charity model, that's for sure, as a community. I just don't know. I don't know if the people from charity are watching, but I don't think if... I don't know if they're used to how we're going to do things today. So <laughs> we're talking about, they said set up an ops room and it's going to go till 10 at night and then the morning people call again. That's their typical By setup, lunch, we're going to be done. We're wrapping up at lunch. <laughs> I hope you're listening. Anyway, there's been tremendous, tremendous <laughs> excitement throughout the city. There really has been. I don't know if you saw any billboards up and down Bathurst. Yeah, we saw some notices, yeah. Um, notices yeah those, that, those oh, signs i guess when you're six foot uh 12 <laughs> those, those, are, those are notices those are yeah that's a little those flyer are flyers right yeah um so to the rest of us normal size people those are billboards um well, but there's been I there's really been a lot of excitement and even up until last night more families are calling that they want to be matchers like we didn't even continue to reach out to potential matchers once we reached the amount we wanted it with matchers people keep calling saying we want to be matchers because they know as a donor, if you could, you know, if, if you can make a further impact, if your money could go further, they want to be part of that and they want to see this be successful. So, so every dollar is worth how much today? Right now is four. Four Every dollar is four. And then we'll do a bonus round and we'll see based on how many matchers come in until then how much that's going to be. So you're very confident. You're already thinking bonus round. Yes, I'm confident. Is that a new? Is that a, uh, a new is that news to you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That again. Uh, all right. So the the challenge, I guess we could call it a challenge, has really been given. You want this over by midday. You want this over by lunch. I think and we could raise the first million by lunch. <laughs> anyone? Anyone with me? Yeah. No, why not? Of course. Right. Uh, look at the round of applause you got for that. Yeah. And uh, and then of course, if there is a bonus round, which you do anticipate, we uh, will have a bonus round. Hopefully, that will uh, that will uh, increase the uh, the amount of donors and the uh, number of dollars that are raised uh, today through the Charity.com campaign. Charity.com slash Toronto. And one of the things I've emphasized is even though it officially begins at 9 a.m. Eastern time, people could really give right now. Yes. So I don't think there's ever a Jewish organization who's not ready to take money. So pay up, people. <laughs> By the way, and you can speak to this because you're, you're a world traveler. You've been to many places. You always meet people who are either from Toronto, have an affinity toward the city, know people here. Because I said that one of the reasons I love this for our audience is we don't, we're not just speaking to residents of Toronto today. We're speaking to people who understand and appreciate how great a city this is. And many of them, of course, visit. Many of them have relatives and friends. They also should be participating today. Yeah, of course. If you ever come here for Shabbos or yeah. Yontif and you want to be able to carry while you're here, <laughs> you know, you're responsible too. Good point. Good luck, people. <laughs> Yummy Schachter. Maybe we'll get there before lunch. It could be. Yeah. If we have enough okay. of a response from south of the border, why yeah. not? Uh, Yummy Schachter, thank you. And thanks for bringing Yummy us. Schachter, who uh, earlier in this program actually welcomed us to Toronto and weeks ago came up with this amazing idea of a charity.com campaign and uh, came up with an even better idea to involve us. He is here with us. Facebook Live. Go to the Toronto Hatsala page. And, of course, continue to tune in here to a JM in the AM. And uh, what can you tell us so far about what's happening on the Charity.com website? I haven't been able to log on yet. I will do so shortly, and I'll give you an update. But I can tell you that the buzz throughout the city is unbelievable. Um, it's, it's the first time in a long time that it's almost starting to feel like New York here. <laughs> Is that the goal? Is no, that... like the energy. The, Toronto doesn't have energy like this. It's unbelievable what's going on. Uh, and I just want to remind people listening and watching and supporting that, um, you know, we're not asking for money for an orphanage in Haiti or for a hospital in Israel or for a coal for kangaroos in Australia. This is These are two organizations that everybody uses. And if you use it, you have a responsibility to support them, even if it's a dollar if it's $10, if it's $18, whatever it is, everything is being quadrupled today. So make four times the impact. Um, but again, if you're part of this community and you make use of either or both of these services, I think everybody has a responsibility to support. 
the people we've spoken to so far. Does that sound too tough? I just think it's honest. It, it sounds like a an, an important directive. It sounds like uh, people should react to it. Those who live in Toronto and those who do not, who are familiar with how great this city is. You mentioned uh, earlier people who visit here are obviously taking advantage of Hatsala and the Eruv on a regular basis. They should consider donating as well. And as you just mentioned, every single dollar donated is quadrupled, which means that uh, obviously it's tremendous value. And every donation, uh, large and small. Speaking with Yami Shachter, we've heard a lot of pride today. People who've sat in that chair speak with pride about both organizations and the work that's being done. I don't know how much you were able to hear of the Chief's phone call, but to hear somebody from the general community who deals with 300,000 calls a year talk about the volunteers of Hatzal the way he just did with the dedication and appreciating the incredible training and, uh, and the motivation that they have to help people of all backgrounds was really nice and to have that type of relationship we know this from the new york area makes all the difference in the world and oh, yeah. it sounds like the volunteers are doing just that absolutely i mean aviva touched on it before and i'm sure you will hear this uh theme throughout the toronto community is extremely unique um as far as how tight-knit it is and how much every you know how close everyone is no matter what their background their affiliation is and specifically when it comes to philanthropic things um, the community really, really comes together. Everyone's got each other's backs, and you know everyone feels a responsibility. We are a small community. I mean, two hundred fifty thousand Jews in the city, right. but it still feels and and is is sort of run as a very small community where everyone feels a responsibility towards everyone else. And uh, that's why I think you know what I I was I was half joking before when I said I don't think charity knows what's going to happen today. But the truth is, you know, I, they've done campaigns in Toronto, but I think this really appeals these two organizations specifically appeal to the broader organization, uh, broader community. And I think uh, they might be surprised at how quickly we reach the goal, and and I think we'll surpass it by quite a by quite a lot. So. It's, the, uh, it's going to be an exciting day ahead. The chairman of our Jewish Unity Initiative, when we hit the road, especially now uh, toward the end of 2018, had one thing to say to us, uh, and that was, it has to be a show that displays Jewish unity. That's what our chairman always says. It has to be a show that displays Jewish unity. Everybody, it, it, I think it's obvious, but you, I'm sure you can confirm this. Everyone who's been here so far this morning... Uh, it's obvious that they represent really every angle of the Jewish community here, uh, right to left, up and down. And I think that's important to point out because if we're, our theme, and our theme is always Jewish, Jewish unity, uh, you know, I, I think this is one of the most important aspects of this campaign. It shows the unity of the Toronto Jewish community. Yes, and, and you'll see that more and more. And I think uh, your next guest is calling in now. And Paul Thorne is my honorary Jewish brother. So I'm excited you're going to be here. Well, in five now. minutes. Am I, am I, can I, do I have authorization to mention some of the statistics you showed me? Sure, or? and if you want, uh, Chaya maybe could share some of the names as well, so we could thank people who are so eagerly uh, awaiting to support this important campaign that they already gave early. All right, so what um, do we do here? Here I, are some I, of the stats. I, c- I can read any of these names here on the right side? Is that how it works? The, and thank yeah, because they listed them publicly, and just so you know, um, I just gave you the stats. We already have over 70 donations online. Totaling over $53,000, which is amazing. Correct. So everybody out there, realize that you're not just joining a campaign that's starting at 9 a.m. You're joining a campaign that's off to a remarkable start already, over $50,000. And people like Sarah and Joe Koval and Harold and Carol Goldberg and DNL Carpino and Ruvain Dorbach and Roman Isakoff and those who want to be anonymous and Berna Rokach. I'm just reading some of the names that have already come through. Yaron and Bracha Derman, Rebecca and Ori Goldstein. David Fight, Scott and Devorah Woodrow. You're talking about people who are giving amounts that are being quadrupled. Uh, Moshe and Pam Friedman, Hani Arye Bain, the Marcus family has contributed, Lorraine Ringel has contributed, Zevin Zahavaz Lotnik have contributed, and we thank them. A lot of people that I've mentioned are giving significant amounts and having those uh, quadrupled as we speak, and that is the way to do it. Stephen Halpern, thank you. Douglas and Shana Ross, thank you. Yael and Baruch Chakubovic, thank you. Uh, go to charity.com slash Toronto, charity.com slash Toronto. Eitan and Leah Israel, the Rosenzweigs, Sylvia Schwartz, Gord Lindsay, Daniela and Seth Greenspan, Dina Greenberg. All of these names are people who've already contributed and are part of the charity.com slash Toronto campaign. Yummy. And by the way, part of, uh, in addition to contributing financially, which again, I don't, I'm not saying this to be too pushy, but I believe everyone has a responsibility to give something, whatever they're able to. Right. Um, but that. people like Dina Greenberg, who you just mentioned, mm-hmm. 
who also are working tirelessly not only on behalf of this campaign but on behalf of so many different organizations throughout the community to rally the troops and get people to spend their time and donate their time and volunteer. Um, that's a very big part of today's success um, is thanks to over 150 volunteers who've already signed up and we will have over 200 volunteers by the time uh, things get going in the headquarters, which will be at the Aguda North for whoever wants to come in and help make some phone calls and spread the word. Um, but people like Dina who are amazing and do incredible things for the community. Um, so obviously financially for people to support is very important and it's very, uh, it's, uh, very much needed. Um, but giving your time is just as important no matter where in the community you live. And that's why we're recommending you go to charity.com slash Toronto. By the way, a very important reminder and I'm sure Yummy agrees with this. We've met a lot of people so far this morning that had really inspiring words about this campaign. I, I was probably not one of them, but yes, okay, there but, were some But, but there guys. were others that were rem remarkable. Tonight, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, this entire broadcast is going to be replayed on the Nahum Siegel Network. Tonight, at 6 p.m. until 9 o'clock, uh, just like the regular time of JM and M, but in this case during the evening, this entire broadcast will be um, repeated, which means that Dr. Perlon and the chief, and... Um, Dove Kudin. And Dove. Amazing. All these conversations that were so inspiring about the Arab and about Hatzalah, everybody will be able to tune in tonight. And I'm sure even if you've reached your goal, people will still be able to donate tonight, right? Yeah. And also, I want to thank Uri Abramov, who stayed up very late last night setting up the cameras, and who came early this morning thank setting you, everything Uri. up, and who will be helping us throughout the day in taking clips from the three-hour show. Uh, and, and cutting them down into clips that we could use for social media and to promote both of these incredible causes as well as uh, anything else we might be able to uh, use them for in terms of promoting the importance of these two organizations and the importance of supporting this campaign. And Uri never thought we'd reunite in Toronto, but we've reunited in Toronto, which is amazing. And there it is, Jewish unity, reuniting in Toronto.